First Corinthians chapter number nine. First Corinthians chapter number nine, brother Vance is known. Uh, he done learned, amen. Just wait a little bit before he cuts me on. I'll say something <laughs> foolish, amen. But anyway, um, I called some. I can't. I called some names out one time. Carol said, "You better call Vance and tell him not to put that on." <laughs> I said, I don't care about them names. I ain't worried about them. But anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, for about, uh, we've had three messages on uh, soul winning, on uh, trying to uh, do what we can to uh, bring people to Christ. Uh, we do what we can, and we let God do what he does. Amen. Uh, we don't do God's job. Now, God expects us to get the gospel out. Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Yep. The book of Acts tell, tells about where we're supposed to go. And we're supposed to reach the whole world with the gospel. <laughs> Amen. Yep. Yeah. But we can't accept Christ for them. Amen. Right. We can't get saved for them. If we could, then we would. Amen. Yeah. We got family members, first of all, we get saved for. Yeah. All of our children will be saved. Right. All of our grandchildren will be saved. Right. But we can't get saved for them. And if you understand what I'm saying tonight, children, we cannot get saved for you. Your mom and That's your right. daddy can't get you saved. That's right. Your mama and your papa can't get you saved. Right. You gotta you gotta realize your own self that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus. Amen. That's why Amen. Jesus went to the cross. Amen. We're we're not Calvinistic here at this church. Uh, we don't teach false doctrine. That is false doctrine. Right. That God's elect or God elected so many or God picked so many or chose so many. That's the lie of the pits of hell. Right. Right. And God didn't do that, amen. amen. Man right. has free will. He yeah. has a choice to make. Right. The Bible said, whosoever shall yeah. call upon the name of the Lord right. shall be saved. Yeah. Amen. amen. Yeah. So that's what we believe here at this church and that's what the Bible teaches. And right. so that's what we teach, amen. And so we got to be clear about that. Might I say tonight, uh, I am kind of green tonight because I feel like I've let folks down because of the dates of this uh, camp situation that make me sick on my stomach because I know that uh, Jamie and Vance and Star and Ray uh, had their minds set and hearts set on going, was looking forward to this. And it just has grieved me, I'm telling you, it really does. Uh, when something like this happens and uh, folks of the church are affected by that. I know I have love for you because it affects me. And I, 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 don't, I, and I, I don't feel like I've let you down. I mean, I may feel a little bit like that, but uh, I hope you know that the dates got mixed up by somebody else, not by me. And uh, Brandon, if you're watching this video, you're guilty, amen. <laughs> but anyway... Amen. That's Pastor Brandon up there in Graham, North Carolina. But anyway, we, we love him. Amen. We appreciate Brother Brandon. We're just joking about that. But anyway, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I want to read, if you can, about, uh, about four verses, amen. And I, I believe that God would uh, have us to be like Paul in this text. Everybody there, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 19. Paul says, for though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might, a, might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not <coughs> without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now, when Paul says, I'm going to go ahead and clear this up at the end of that verse 22 there, save some, he's not meaning that he's going to save them, but he's going to get them to the Lord that can save them. 
That's what he means by that. And so in verse 22, he says, There at the last, I have made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So I want to preach tonight if I can. By all means, let's get some saved. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, in that, I, I, want to, I want to reiterate this as much as possible. Do not tell your children or grandchildren, any child, to repeat this prayer. Right. Don't do that. You let them come to you and ask questions, and you answer the questions biblically. Amen. Don't answer the question for them, and uh, be real sensitive. Be real careful. Right. Let the Holy Ghost yep. do what the Holy Ghost does. Amen. And so uh, in this text, Paul said there in verse 19, he said, But though I be free from all men, yet I make myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. <coughs> Paul said, I want to do whatever I can yep. to win everybody to the Lord. I want to talk about that tonight. I'm going to use four points if I can. But when Paul says, I want to do all I can to win every man, he says there in that text, in verse 22, verse 19 and 20 talks about the Jews. Or verse 19, uh, 20 talks about the Jews. Verse 21 talks about Gentiles. So that covers everybody. Yeah. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. And, uh, in verse 22, he said, uh, to the weak I became weak. He said, uh, that I might gain the weak. He said, I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now, what he's saying here is I want to do anything I, and everything I can for people to be saved. Save compromise. Amen. You don't want to compromise. Now, let me just give you, uh, by way of introduction, a couple things or a few things that we don't want to compromise on. We don't want to compromise on Scripture. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're not going to go above the Scripture. We're not going to go below. We're not going to, uh, listen, we're not going to add to, we're not going to take away. Nope. Amen. 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 And I'm talking about that King James Bible yeah. that you have in your life. And if you don't have a King James Bible, you need to trash what you got and get one. Amen. 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 I'm telling you that King James Bible is the word of God for English speaking people. Yeah. And so here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to compromise the scripture. Amen. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Yeah. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should buy. Now, a lot of people, they would, say, they would tell you and other churches or other denominations, you do this and you do that to get saved. You don't do anything. Christ has already done it. Amen. Christ done it on a hill called Calvary. Right. Amen. Yeah. Right. He shed his blood for man's sin. And so we don't compromise the scripture. We don't compromise the spirit. As I said earlier, I'll say again, let the Holy Ghost do the work. Amen. Amen. You can trust the Holy Ghost. Because he's going to do <laughs> what the word says. Right. Amen. If you're saved tonight, it's a word of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that, that convicts you and brings you to the Lord. Right. Amen. I, I believe it's John, uh, John 6. I might be wrong. Let's look right quickly. John 6, 44 says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, right. and I will raise him up at the last day. You know how the, the Father draws him with his spirit, you see. And you can trust the spirit. So we don't want to compromise the scripture. We don't want to compromise the spirit. We don't want to compromise the Savior. We're not going to compromise concerning the Savior. Right. Jesus said, I am the way. Amen. You know what that means? He's the only way. Amen. Right. Amen. You can't get to heaven without Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the scripture says in Matthew 7, he said, many will say in that day, many will say, Lord, Lord. And he said, I will profess on them I never knew you. That's right. Amen. 
Now, we've used this scripture as well, Proverbs eleven thirty. That's Old Testament scripture. He that winneth souls is wise. Now, may I say it's going to take a wise man to win souls. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, it, it you can you can we could use this as making uh, uh, a thought for the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, uh, if you win somebody over. In other words, how would you win somebody over? You would win them over by being friendly. You would win them over by having a good personality, yeah. good conversation. And so the same, the same characteristics can be used in the New Testament. But we're going to try to win them not only over to us, but to him, you see. But if we can't win them over to us, we're not going to be able to win it to him. That's why testimony plays such a great part in soul winning. Now, number one, you can, you can uh, listen, by all means, let's get some say. You can do that by your warning. Turn in the Old Testament in, e in Ezekiel chapter number three. This scripture still holds true today. The Bible said in Ezekiel chapter number three, and in verse number 16, if you're there, say amen. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16. <coughs> there, say amen. amen. Ezekiel 3, 16 said, And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, I'm going to use this if I can tonight. The Lord has put Ezekiel in a place, and he is called a watchman. In the New Testament, the Lord has said, Go ye, go ye. It says that in the book of Matthew and Mark. And uh, it tells us to go to the world, amen, and preach the gospel. And so what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to tell them of Jesus. They don't accept Jesus, they're, they're, they're going to end up in hell. And so Ezekiel says, the Lord says to Ezekiel here, give them warning. Verse 18, he says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. If we do not warn the wicked, their blood will be on our hands. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, listen, we can win somebody. Listen, we can uh, maybe help someone uh, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ by warning them of the truth. Amen. Not only by warning them the truth, but in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Turn there right quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 11. We can warn them not only of the truth, but we can warn them of the terror of the Lord. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse number 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Amen. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Now, you know, I said earlier, if we're going to try to win anybody to the Lord, it's going to be those that's closest to us. It's going to be our children. It's going to be our grand It's going to be our family members. It'll be your brother. It'll be your sister. And listen, don't just don't just say, uh, have the mindset, I'm right about this. They're wrong about that. You're going to end up in hell. I'm going to be in heaven. Don't be satisfied with just being right about it. Don't be satisfied until you told them the truth and tried your best to win them to the Lord. Don't ever give up. Amen. Don't go to heaven and just be right. Amen? Right. I, I, you know, we all about being right. Most of us are. I, I want to be right. I really want to be right. But I, I listen, I don't want to just go to heaven and be there by myself just because I'm right. I'll listen, you know what I'm saying? Or be there, me and, and, and part of my family not be there. Right. Amen. I, I'm not going to try to tell somebody the truth 
because I know I'm right. I want to tell somebody the truth and know I'm right, but I want them to be right too. Right. I want them to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so we can get some saved by our warning. Then we can get some saved by our walk. Now we use a New Testament scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. This is actually talking to the wives of how to win their husband, an unbelieving husband. But the Bible says here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, look there with me if you will. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. I'm not going to preach that part. That if any obey not in word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So here we find a, 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 a wife that is a born-again Christian and a husband that is not. And the Bible said there, it says be in subjection to your own husband. That's in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now if, you're, if, if, somebody was, if a woman was married to a man and he told her to do something that was against the word of God, she's not, she don't have to subject herself to that. Amen. If he says, get your boo hide in the kitchen and make me a sandwich, you need to do it. <laughs> that don't happen these days, does it? No, just, <laughs> that was a little joke right there. <clears throat> Likewise, you wives, my wife said, you know where the bologna is, you know where the mayonnaise is, and the bread's on the table. She said, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. In other words, if they if they're not, if they don't they don't know the word. They not trusted Christ, and they they don't uh, they don't obey the word. He said that also may without the word be won by the conversation, the lifestyle. Right. In other words, the way that woman lives yeah. will bring him to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. You can tell somebody all you want to you say, but until they see it, they ain't gonna believe it. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. I, I I see that. I've seen that. Listen. I've, I've seen myself live that way as a teenager. I was born again Christian and, 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 and done some things, said some things, hung out with a crowd, just like I was lost as a ball and high weeds yeah. and no better. Amen. Yeah. And I didn't have to have the preacher to tell me that I was wrong. Amen. I had a fellas in the ministry I ain't going to call no names of no churches or nobody. But this is what he told me. He said he, he was in the ministry and, and he had to go to a certain church to be in the ministry he was in and he went back to his home church afterwards. He said, well, I was glad to be able to get back there. He said, I need the preacher to preach on sin. And I looked at him and I said, really? You need for a preacher to preach on sin. Now, I won't preach on sin because... I believe I ought to. But if you're a born again Christian and, and for you to be able to live right, you need me to preach on sin. Something's wrong. It, listen, if you're saved, you have the Holy Ghost living in you. And listen, when I was a teenager, Brother Vance, and I didn't do right, I didn't talk right, I didn't hang with the wrong, right crowd, just as soon as I decided to do that, and before I ever decided, the Holy Ghost said, don't do that. Right. And when I did it, said, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't be doing this. Right. Yeah. The whole time, I was miserable. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's why this, this thing about living for God, listen, I, I said you can, you can win somebody by your, by, by your warning. You should also win somebody by your walk, <clears throat> your lifestyle. Yeah. Amen. Your conversation, the Bible calls it. That word conversation means not just your talk, but the whole thing, the whole thing about your uh, walk with Christ or your walk in this life. Amen. Be won by the conversation. Listen, not only a wife can win a, a, her husband, but you can do the same with somebody else. This be applicable to anybody. If you, if you when you go to work and you, listen, uh, here's what's going to happen. And I'm not trying to brag on myself because I, I've done some wicked things in my life since I've been saved. 
I've done worse since I've been saved than before I was saved. I got saved when I was seven, so I'm just saying. It's all under the blood. They don't make no excuse, but it's all under the blood. What I'm trying to say is when I went to work at Dexco, 1989, September. This is what these guys, when I walked them in there, was a new one. Several of them come to me and said, there's something different about you. That's what they told me. I said, well, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Y'all getting it? Right. People, people see what you are. You don't have to tell them. Right. Now, we're supposed to tell them, but you don't have to tell them for them to figure out what you are. Right. They would see me bow my head and pray. I didn't get over there in, in the corner and say, oh, Lord, I pray you'd bless this sandwich I'm about to eat over here and amongst all these heathens down here at Dexco Company that need to be saved. I pray you'd save them by the grace of God. No, I didn't do all that. <coughs> I just bowed my head and said, thank you, Lord, this food. Amen. And eat my sandwich. <coughs> I couldn't be no hacking preacher. <coughs> <laughs> I've been a hack since the law the wrong way. Amen. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is People recognize. Listen, <clears throat> I can. I, I I have set in on some things that I shouldn't have set in on. But if it goes on, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just kind of ease off from it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Some of the conversations, the jokes, and you know, you can you, you know you you can get one on me. I mean, or on somebody, and you know. But if it continues. I'm going to slide to the side. Amen. 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 And people notice that, you see. And so you can win somebody by the way you live. Now, there must be positive talk. Now, when I say conversation here, that's not just talking about talk, but it's talking about your walk as well. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me talk about your talk. If, if, if being a Christian, you need to have positive talk. And I would advise you not to hang out with anybody that's negative. Yeah, amen. Now, I ain't going to call no names, but I got family members. That I, listen, we'll get in a conversation, and I have to steer the conversation over here so that we don't go to talking about, I'm not going to save people in my family. I had to steer the conversation this way so we don't have to talk about this over here. I'm going to tell you something right now. Negative people will have a negative impact on your life and it will make you negative. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Brother Vance and Charles were talking Sunday night and I said I'm too negative. <laughs> I'm against everything. Used to be anyway. <laughs> but positive, listen, they need to be positive talk about Christ. How could you ever say anything negative about Christ anyway? Amen. Can I say this? They ought to be positive talk about the church. Yeah. Right. If you know of anything on anybody in the church, don't tell nobody. Now, if it needs to be brought to my attention because they're in a uh, position in the church, then you, you let me know. You better have your evidence now. Don't, don't talk about people in the church. Amen. Don't, don't talk about the church. Oh, the church did this and I don't agree with. Don't go out in the pub and do that. Right. If I hear tell people doing that, we're we, 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 we going to kick you out the front door. We, we don't want that. They ain't no, we don't got no time for no foolishness like that. Right. If you're ever going to win somebody to God, you can't run your church down right. or the church. The body of Christ. Amen. And that takes in the Christian. Right. Has anybody, if you're saved, say amen. 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 Have, you, have you sinned since you've been amen. saved? Amen. Have you done something foolish? Amen. You know what most of us have done? We've done something that we don't want nobody. Now, somebody may know about it. But if we'd have had our rathers, 
Nobody would have known anything about it since we got saved. So why would we spread something somebody else has done? Boy, we, you didn't think we did? I, I get, oh, wait a minute now. Well, I better not tell that because i done something worse than that. But, you know, I got right. You know, nobody knows anything about it, so I can say what they did. No. Got to be careful, folks. Positive talk. Positive talk and a pleasing walk. Amen. 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 What does the Bible say in the book of Hebrews? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right now. Listen, our walk, we ought to walk by faith, and it ought to be pleasing to him. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, walk not after the flesh. Amen. You remember what the Bible says? Let me look there right quickly in Galatians chapter. Chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5 says in verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. If you're walking in the Spirit, and you're thinking godly, amen, yeah. got your mind right and your heart right, you won't fulfill the flesh. But if you go thinking that other way, yeah. and, and, and you know, the, the lust of the flesh ain't always a sexual sin. Amen. It ain't always a man thinking about a woman or a woman thinking about a man. It may be you thinking about something entirely different, but it's just wrong. Maybe you thinking about the love of money. Amen. It may be you want to just give them a piece of your mind. I know this past week I had to zip my lip. I'm just saying. Sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you is, listen, you can win somebody by your warning. You can win somebody by your walk. Number three, you can win somebody by your worship. I'm not going to preach on this very long because I'll say it a bunch. Where are we supposed to be on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Right cheer. How you spell cheer? Right cheer. Supposed to be in the house of God. Amen. You know why we come here? Because we've been pardoned. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and to worship the Lord, you got to be pardoned. Bible says, John 9, 31, we know that God heareth not the prayer of sinners, but if he be a worshiper, him he heareth. Amen. Amen. God expects every child of God to worship. Amen. Amen. And so, you got to be pardoned. You got to be present. <laughs> oh, this online, this COVID boy made it so convenient for everybody to watch Dr. Stanley on Sunday. Amen. <laughs> or to watch Pastor Miles, you know. We're not streaming live. We just later, amen. I like what uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers said. If you think for one minute watching television or watching on a computer screen or on your phone screen it, it is substitute for the house of God, you're wrong. Amen. You're amen. wrong. Amen. amen. If we're able, we ought to be in the house of God. My daddy used to say this. I ain't never said this my daddy said it. He said, for two reasons to be out of the church. <clears throat> Sick in the hospital or dead. <coughs> That's what he used to say. You know what, my listen. Until I was in high school, my daddy's vacation was Thursday morning to Saturday <coughs> evening. That's when we went to the beach. You better get it in there, buddy. You better jump in that pool as many times as you can, Jack. We better to go home. <laughs> Uh, right all the way from Moorhead City to Burlington with a wet, with a wet uh, swimsuit on because I don't went swimming the last minute, amen. Jumping the car, <laughs> the back seat, making the back seat wet with the window down, the rear end hanging out, trying to dry out. 
<laughs> we had 255, well, we had 455 air conditioning. Four windows down at 55 mile an hour. Hey, man. That's what daddy believed. <laughs> he wasn't missing Wednesday night to go on vacation. That's just daddy. But we got to be present. Then we need to be a participant. I got a message. I'm going to preach either this Sunday morning or something last, next Sunday morning. Probably next Sunday morning because I'll probably preach something on Memorial Day this weekend. Half of you going to be gone anyway, so I'm going to save it for you so I can get you real good. But here's the deal. Participate. We need to participate in worship. That don't mean you got to take laps. That means your heart. Your heart needs to be right and your mind needs to be right when we start to worship. You don't wait till the end of the service to get right with God. You know before we ever start, if anything's in your heart or your mind shouldn't be there. And you bow your head and say, God, clear my heart, clear my mind. Help me worship in spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. And it's all right to clap your hands. It's all right to raise your hand. Right. Amen. It's all amen. right to say amen. It's all right to say praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! It's all right. But you don't have to do all that. I like it. Amen. There was why I do that. But that don't listen, if you ain't done none of that, that don't mean you ain't worshiped. Amen. Worship's from right here. Amen. Amen. Right. I said you can win them by your warning, by your walk, by your worship, and you'll win them by your words. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. We gotta hurry up. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. To sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now I want to tell you something. I got three things I want to tell you about this verse. Number one, you have to be real. <laughs> he says there in that verse, he said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanctify means to set apart. No, see, if you're not, listen, if, you, if you're not set apart, people already know that. Right. So that's why I'm saying you need to be real. I ain't, I ain't saying really saved because you can only be saved. Huh? <clears throat> I'm talking about being real. About who you are, what you are, what he's done. Amen. 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 We need to be real. Then we need to be ready. He said there in that verse, and be ready always to give an answer to every man. <clears throat> Look, how are you going to be ready? Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, right and divided the word of truth. Have you been saved five years? You ought to know some Bible. Amen. Amen. If you've been saved six months, you ought to know some Bible. <clears throat> I probably knew more Bible before I got saved to do now. I've been in it all my life. <laughs> I've been taken to church. Yeah. I had, a dr I had a drug problem. My daddy drugged me to church on Sunday morning, and he drugged me to church on Sunday night, and he drugged me to Wednesday night, and he drugged me to revivals, weddings, funerals, all of them. Here now they go to funerals and they say, well, they bring the kids because I don't want them to have to, you know, they're going to have questions. Well, they're going to have to find out sometime or another. That's right. Amen. The Bible said the living will take it to, to heart when somebody passes. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen here. We need to be real. We need to be ready. Ready to give an answer. How are you going to be ready? Meditate. Bible talks about meditating on the word. And then I said, be real, be ready, have a reason. He said there in that verse, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason. Somebody's going to come to you and say, all right, give me a reason. Give me a reason of the hope that is in you, give me a reason that you needed that hope or got that hope or wanted that hope. Now, you always talk about you going to heaven, you're saved. Give me a reason. Well, let me give you a reason. Ephesians chapter 2. 
verse 12 and 13. Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 12 and 13 says, And at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, Amen. and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Let me give you a reason of the hope I have. Because I have no hope. Amen. <clears throat> and I needed hope. Right. And when I realized I needed hope, I desired that hope. And I asked for that hope. And I have that hope. The Bible said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So listen, the only reason you need for hope is that you didn't have hope. Amen? That's the only reason you need. Now you, you can throw in there a bunch of other benefits. Have Christ, have the Holy Spirit to guide me. Have sisters and brothers in Christ. Have a new family. Got a new home. How are you going to heaven when, when I die? Amen. Amen. They, 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 I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You say, well, preacher, I don't have nothing in this life. Well, that's why the Bible tells us not to <coughs> lay up for ourselves here on this earth. Where moth and rust decays it. He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Amen. I want to see Vernon. Brianna, Presley, Levi, Layla, Amen, and Easton, and Becca, and Mark, and Nathan, and Paige, and Caleb. I want to see them in heaven. Oh, Carol, too. <laughs> I'm hoping Carol gets saved. Amen. And I'll pray for her. And Cody. And Lisa. Hey man. Amen. When I go, I want to see them. I'm going to tell you something right now. If, if they're not there, <clears throat> when time is ended, I don't know how long the Lord will allow me to feel this way, but I believe I will for a little bit. At least when I stand in the judgment seat, I'll feel like a failure for just a moment. Then he'll wipe away all tears. Right. And then I'll be all gone. Right. But I want us to be together in yeah. heaven. Yeah. Well, if I knew that song, I'd sing it, Miss Donna. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> Lord, I'm telling you, I want to walk down the streets. I want to run to the fields of green clover. Mm. Can you imagine the greatest thing in eternity is when you get to heaven, you got your whole family there. How about that? Amen. So, it, Mark, it ain't about how much bread you deliver. Becca, it's not how many numbers you crunch. Carol, it's not about how many kids you raise. Brandon, it's not how much trash you dump. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's not how many kids you teach. And I'm glad you there and make an impression. Miss Starr does make an impression. I'm just kidding. Carol has two over there. Kids in the daycare. Brother Vance over at the Jaws of Life. What do you think about it? And all these things we do is good. But the grand thing, the grand finale is when we get to heaven. Yeah. If we have a loved one there with us. Yeah. Well, I want them to be there, I'm telling you. Yeah. And let me tell you something right now. We ought to do all we can. Amen. By all means. I had to look back at my title. <laughs> By all means, get them in. Yeah. Amen. Let's everyone stand.